you're watching Local Bias on GCTV. My guest today is Meg Baker, and then in a few minutes, my guest will be Joshua A.C. Newman, and we're going to talk about independent role-playing games, uh, self-publishing role-playing games, and all those good things. So, hi, Meg. Hi. How are you? I'm good. That's good. So, just so we have a working definition mm -hmm. of what we're talking about, what is a role-playing game? Okay. Um, when people think of games, the first thing they think of, tend to think of is uh, board games, mm -hmm. um, like Monopoly and Sorry and things like that, where you have a set of rules and you're, it controls the actions the, of the game. A role-playing game has similar controls to the actions, but without the board. Um, and you create a story between the people who are playing. Um, it's a lot like playing pretend with children, but mm -hmm. for grown-ups. Um, and instead of pretending to be, you know, the queen and the little prince and, you know, whoever else my children want to be, instead of doing that, I'm playing with my grown-up friends, mm -hmm. and we are creating original fiction together at a table, usually around a specific topic. Uh -huh. um, different, there's so many games out there, and each of them is designed to create a different type of story. Mm -hmm. And um, that would be how I would sum it up. Okay. All right. So it's sort of like, I think the one that people probably, who people know the most is, is Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or uh, World of Warcraft, which is actually a, a computer game. Right. Okay. So what's, what's the difference from what we're talking about? Because we are talking about independently published ones. Right. Um, World of Warcraft and Dungeons and Dragons are both big, established games, um, very different things that they're doing. Um, there's many, many hours of discussion about how what I'm doing and what my friends are doing, independent role-playing game design is doing, is different than those two things. Um, oh, that's a big question. Um, how it's medium-sized answer. <laughs> How it's different than computer games is that it's face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. It's more, it's, it's, it's happening in real time. You know, we're sitting here talking about what we do. Uh, it's a more improv theater mm -hmm. than um, Dungeons and Dragons. In my experience, back in 1978, when I started role-playing, um, was much more involved with numbers and tables and things, mm -hmm. as opposed to the shared fiction that we're making. Um, and in terms of computer games, there's so much that you can do sitting at a screen, mm -hmm. looking at a computer, and then there's a whole lot more you can do when you're face to face with someone, um, because then you can see how they're responding, mm -hmm. and you're playing with other people, which is a social act. It's a social activity. Mm -hmm. It's it, it more imaginative because you're creating your own characters, mm -hmm. and instead of following the specific agenda that the online games may have. Okay. So what other benefits do you have if you're, I can think of them. I mean, okay. if you're sitting <laughs> at a table with somebody and you're sitting with your friends, but what else, what else, what, what's another benefit? Okay. Why would somebody want to play a game? Why I would mean? someone want to play yeah. a game? Yeah. Well, um, it's fun. It's really fun. Okay. I've been playing role-playing games since I was six, uh -huh. and my older brother got the D&D &D box set. Uh -huh. And I'm now 36, so I've been playing, I've been actively involved in role-playing games for 30 years. Um, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> Why someone wa want to play is because it's, an, it's a way to explore ideas. Mm -hmm. um, similar to if you were writing or painting or doing any other creative art. Okay. Um, but it's a way to do it with other people and get feedback. Uh -huh. And if I want to think about an idea of you know, what would it be like if I were thus and such person? Being able to be in that role and have mm -hmm. some structure and being able to bounce off other people helps me to explore that more. Sometimes it's completely fun, fluffy bunny. You know, I'm going to pretend to be an elf and we're going to tramp through the forest. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's much deeper. Uh, sometimes I've played in games where we're all dealing with different issues around our parents or poverty or you know, how do we get out of situations that are very difficult? And much more deep things that come out. And it's a way to 
put some of that outside myself mm -hmm. and unpack it a little more. Okay. So what kind of games are there? What I mean, clearly there's something for everyone. So mm -hmm. give me a few examples of... A range of games. A range of games. Okay. Well, I'll talk about the ones that I know best. Okay. Um, which would be, first would be my game, uh -huh. if that's appropriate now. Or yes. Do okay. Go for it. Um, I wrote a game called Thousand and One Nights, a uh -huh. game of enticing stories. And in my game, it sets up a framework by which people can create original tales of the Arabian Nights. I grew up loving the Arabian Nights stories. I wanted to more of them. I wanted to have a way that people could experience that. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a game in which you can create original stories in the manner of a Thousand and One Nights. That's one way. Mm -hmm. um, another game that's great out there is called Primetime Adventures. Mm -hmm. And it was written by my friend Matt Wilson. And it is basically creating a television show. And it's fantastic uh -huh. because it's, its tagline is the greatest, the greatest shows you've never seen, something like that. Uh -huh. um, so basically, you could pick any sort of topic you want and build okay. a show around it. There's, there's really something for everyone. Um, other big ones would be Burning Wheel, which mm -hmm. is huge, m building every tiny detail of a world, and just if you want long, long campaigns of years and years and years of play where you can always find out new things about this fiction that you're building together, mm -hmm. that would be a good one. Um, Dogs in the Vineyard, um, written by Vincent Baker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we play in the mythic American West, uh -huh. and you play sort of preacher, circuit preacher, gunslinger types that go and go from town to town and fix things. Um, boy, there, there's you know, when you ask me what is it like, it just explodes because there's so yeah. many things. There's really something for everyone. There's a great one called um, "Don't Rest Your Head," which is about insomnia. You know what happens when you're really sleep deprived, uh -huh. and what happens if the kind of craziness that you get into when you're really sleep deprived actually was some sort of other space. You, you really can go anywhere. When you, talk, when you start talking about imagination mm -hmm. and creativity, you take those things together and you have an unlimited resource mm -hmm. for exploration. And that's what role-playing games are about. Okay.